Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. Uh, for today's beer review, we've got us another German Brewer head-to-head -head battle, and we are jumping back over to Hefeweizen's. Um, today we have two very, very old brewers, very old indeed. Uh, starting with Hockerpschor, uh, this is their Weisse. It's a Hefeweizen, 5.5%. They are based out of Munich. Um, founded at least in its earliest uh, iteration in 1417. There is debate about the actual date that Hocker became Hocker, but 1417 is in the historical record, the first mention of the brewer. Uh, then second, we have Francis Connor. This is uh, Weiss beer is the name of it. This is also a Hefeweizen, 5% uh, ABV on this one, also based out of uh, Munich, Germany. Um, again, there's debate about when they were technically officially founded, but 1363 is the first uh, historical mention of uh, Francis Connor as the brewer it is today. So two very, very old German brewers. We're talking six, 700 years of brewing tradition under their belts. Um, this is gonna be another fun one. Uh, <laughs> these two are a couple of my favorite uh, Hefas out there and um, I can't wait to get started. So we're gonna do exactly that. Uh, starting with a Hockerpschor, uh, Weisse, five and a half percent. Okay, so jumping in with beer number one at today's head-to-head -head Hefeweizen battle. We have Hocker Pschor, uh, the Weisse. This is, of course, their Hefeweizen, 5.5% ABV out of Munich, Germany. Uh, before we get started here, you may have heard and you may not have heard, but uh, the, the pronunciation of this beer brand is Hocker Pschor with a P. The P is pronounced in German. Uh, the German alphabet has the same letters barring they have an S set. That's the thing that looks like a, a cursive capital B. That's the symbol for a double S in German. It's called an S set. And then they also have umlauted vowels. That's the vowels with two dots above them that indicates a different pronunciation. Um, but the base standard German alphabet is just like English, it's 26 letters. It's A, B, C, D, A, F, G, H, I, J, K L M N O P Q R S T U V V X Y Z, and uh, that that's the base alphabet. And the names of the letters give you an indication of how the letters are pronounced um, and how the words are pronounced. So uh, P's are pronounced in German Hocker Pschor. Uh, you will often hear sure, that is an incorrect pronunciation. Ask any native German speaker, peas are pronounced, just like the word plant, pflanza, uh, pound, pfund, uh, penny, pfennig, uh, peas are pronounced in German. Uh, nonetheless, let's get this poured straight in the glass. Um, as is typical, very understated bottle art with the German brewers, not really, there's a little portrait on there. But let's get this poured in. All right, yep, that is very, very effervescent. So this glass is actually rather difficult to pour into. I'm gonna have to let that settle for a minute before we can continue. Um, but while we do so, golly, that head is just gonna form like crazy. It's so effervescent. Let's give it a sniff. Oh, that's a very, very nice aroma. This smells exactly what I expect to smell when I get my nose down in a half of Eitzen. And it's got a very pronounced aroma indeed. Um, this smells very clove forward, but you do still get uh, a bit of the malt back. And it also has this kind of bright citrusy quality about it as well. Um, so it smells re really nice, very refreshing. Uh, I stand by Hefeweizen's are one of the great hot summer day beers. They are just refreshing by nature. Um, this glass will not hold a full 12 ounces. I don't believe it's been a while since I've used it. It's great for Hefeweizen's and really uh, wheat beers in particular. It also works okay for Lambics and other sours. Um, it's got that kind of, it's kind of like a scrunched in, more narrow version of my Sam Adams all-purpose glass, uh, but this almost because it's so thin and skinny and has such a crazy, crazy, uh, concave taper down at the bottom and only a slight tulip where it goes, uh, blooms back out. It's much more akin to pouring into a flute 
which would be great for a lambic and, and really most sours. They, they work well in that style of glassware. Um, but I got most of this in here. As you can see, uh, well, maybe you can't see, but this is standard Hefeweizen. Um, it's got a slightly cloudy appearance to it, which you expect. And it is effervescent, but after it formed that head, now it's just got very slow, fine, almost champagne-like bubbles coming up. Uh, this head is ridiculously thick and creamy. All, honestly, it looks like the head such as one would get on top of a cream ale or a stout on a nitro tap. So it's a little much, and I want to break that down just a bit. So I'm, I'm just going to agitate with my finger to let that head start to collapse just a bit before I jump in fully. But uh, let's give it another sniff. Gosh, that smells so good. This smells just exactly like you expect a Hefeweizen to smell. It is that textbook Hefe aroma that is just so appealing. Hefeweizen yeast is such a special strain of yeast. It adds such a depth of aroma and flavor that you really can't get from any other yeast strain. Sure, you could dump some cloves and some lemon zest into your batch, uh, but this yeast strain does it naturally. And that's, uh, that's half the fun of this style. I'm gonna get this topped off just a little bit more to get up to where the tulip starts to come back in on itself. Okay, great. And that head is settled down enough, so I'm gonna jump right in. Let's give it a sip. That's a very, very good Hefeweizen. It really, really is. This is one of the standard, just default Hefeweizen experiences for me. This is what I think of in my brain when I think, boy, I'd like to have a Hefeweizen today. This is the aroma and the flavor that I expect. This is very, very well done. This is not as bold and in your face flavor forward as some other Hefeweizens. It's, uh, but it's well, well, well above average in its intensity and it's got the exact right profile. Um, five and a half percent, it's got a little more structure to it. So I'm gonna jump back in and uh, do a little exploring of body and mouthfeel and see exactly how this finish develops. Body is medium to medium light. It's not a heavy body on this beer style. Even with five and a half percent ABV, it's not heavy. The mouthfeel is ridiculously silky smooth and almost creamy, um, which is not common in a Hefeweizen. It's not a bad thing, but it's the same quality that helped it develop such a ridiculously thick, creamy head. I mean, that was just an absolutely gorgeous head on really almost any beer style. Certainly a head on a Hefeweizen is not out of place. And I don't recall the last time I had one develop that, that tight and creamy. God, it was just a beautiful head. This is a very fine beer. Um, the flavor profile comes on up front, clove and citrus. That's the dominant flavors that come through. And it's really about 75% clove, 25% kind of citrus characteristics. And then you get the malt behind that. And then the malt and the clove and the citrus kind of take an even ride together all the way once they bo all become present in the beer. Then it's almost even all the way to the end. And then it just tapers off and gets progressively lighter and lighter and lighter in intensity to the end. For a Hefeweizen, it's got a pretty long finish. Um, gosh, it's probably been 20, 30 seconds since I had that sip. I can still taste that clove and that citrus quality and the malts behind. It's got a nice, clean, long finish to it. This is a very, very well executed Hefeweizen. Um, I'm gonna take my time, sip on this, come up with my scores, and when we come back, we will get to number two of our head-to-head -head battle, Francis Connors Vice Beer, 5%. Okay, now we're moving on to our second beer of today's uh, Hefeweizen German Brewer head-to-head -head battle. This is the Francis Connor Weiss beer, 5% ABV, also out of Munich. Um, again, uh, there's just like a little monk on there drinking some beer on the label, nothing much that's noteworthy. So we're just gonna get this one poured right in the glass 
I'm going to start this a little more gently than I did the last one. This glass is a little trickier to pour into properly to keep the head from going absolutely insane. That's pretty good. All right, so holding it up to the light. Again, it's a little bit cloudy. Um, not super duper hazy, but it, it's a little cloudy as, as a standard for this style. It's got about the same color, uh, maybe just a little bit lighter in color than the last one. And indeed, uh, the, the Hawker Shore was just a bit more amber in appearance. This looks uh, much more textbook Heffa, very, very light pale yellow with just a slight hint of amber. Um, head formed again, beautifully creamy, and it's got that same kind of champagne-like little slow trickle of bubbles coming up from the bottom. So I'm gonna jump in for a sniff. I'll tell you, aroma-wise, these two beers are almost indistinguishable from one another. Um, the only thing I could say is that this does not have quite as pronounced of an aroma, but uh, the actual aroma that it produces is nearly identical. Um, the clove and the citrus and uh, the malts in the back are almost identical in how heavily they come through and in their balance. So aroma-wise, aside from intensity of aroma, it's really hard to tell these two beers apart. You can blindfold me. I'm not sure I could tell which one was which. Um, nonetheless, that head has settled down a little bit here. I'm going to see how close I can get. All right, that's right at the top of where it starts to go concave again. So we're going to jump right in. Mm. This is another very, very good Hefeweizen. Um, ooh, oh, the longer this finishes, the more intense it gets. Okay, I was about to make a statement and I will still, I'll explain. Up front, the intensity of the clove on this one is not as great as it is on the Hockerp Shore. But after that first couple of seconds, the intensity of that clove profile comes through very strongly. Indeed, I would say of all the Hefeweizens that I've reviewed in the last several episodes, this hands down has the most clove forward flavor profile of all of them. Um, it's very enjoyable. Um, a lot of people really enjoy this style for that Hefeweizen yeast and it does impart this clovey, that's almost universal, this clovey, uh, aroma and flavor, and you'll often get different fruit. Um, banana is actually quite common, which is rare for a beer. Um, uh, that uh, uh, Omegang Nomageddon that I had, that uh, strong Belgian Golden Strong Ale that I did several, several episodes ago, that was the most intense banana flavor that I've ever had in a beer. Um, but it does come through in hepatitis. It's, it's very common, it's, it's a common. You'll often get other different fruit and typically it's gonna be kind of fruit that are tropical in nature, um, not so much apples and, and you know pears and things like that, but more like mangoes and other kind of tropical exotic, exotic fruit, if you will. But this is very, very nice. I'm gonna jump back in so I can really pick apart this finish and get the body and mouth feel. The body here, actually, even at half a percent lower ABV, it's got a little bit more substance than the Hockerp Shore did. Um, not by much, it's still a medium light body, uh, medium light to medium. Um, Mouthfeel, not nearly as creamy. Um, it's not viscous at all. It uh, really just feels almost identical to having water in your mouth, only you get that delicious beer flavor. The finish on this, it's that kind of meld of malt and clove and, and citrus that uh, mixes in the front and then it basically keeps that even thirds all the way through the flavor profile from the start to the very finish and it just increases in intensity and then peters off in intensity but it's extremely even all the way down um, what you get up front is what you get through the entire ride of this beer with each sip very very well balanced very very well balanced um, the thing that sets these apart really is just how this builds in intensity of the clove after the first two, three seconds, and then it kind of peters off. I mean, they're strikingly similar beers. It just really comes down to a slight difference in appearance, how the head form and intensity of that Hefeweizen yeast profile. 
This is another very, very good HEPA bites in. Um, if I recall, it, it's been nearly two decades, but this was again one of the original uh, beers that I used to drink with regularity when I was first getting into really good beer, getting away from big box American, you know, big brand and discovering all these hundreds of years old beers that Germany's been brewing for years in Belgium and France and Italy and all of them and getting in the craft scene, American and global. This was one of them and I had never tasted a beer like this in my life. Hefeweizen's kind of blew my mind and I remember distinctly Francis Connor. This was the one I went for uh, more so than the others and it's because of that clove intensity. This does have a much more intense clove forward nature than your average Hefeweizen and it's very enjoyable indeed. So I'm gonna take my time really enjoying the last of this beer, come up with my scores. And when we come back, we will get them both ranked top to bottom. Okay, now that we have gotten to enjoy both of these beers, we're gonna go through and get them both ranked top to bottom. Uh, starting with the Hockerpschor, uh, their Weisse, uh, again, both of these are Hefeweizens. It's a German brewer Hefeweizen head-to-head -head battle. Five and a half percent on this one. Uh, both brewers out of the city of München or Munich. Um, Hacker. The aroma was very nice. It was quite pronounced for a Hefe. Uh, certainly well above average. It gets an eight. Uh, moving to the Francis Connor for the aroma. It was really nice. Still the classic Hefe aroma, but it wasn't quite as intense. I gave it the high end of average. I gave it a six. Um, Taste-wise, uh, for the Hockerpschor, I gave it a 9. I really, really enjoyed it. I would have just liked a little more clove intensity to, to kick it up that extra notch. Uh, Francis Connor, perfect 10 out of 10 for me. That clove intensity and the equal balance of, of flavors in there between that clovey nature, the slightly fruity, citrusy nature, and the malt, just, just it was perfect. Uh, 10 out of 10. Um, for the body, they both had a textbook body, medium light for Hefeweizen. That's what you want. It is not a heavy beer style and they both nailed it. They both get a 10 out of 10. Uh, moving on to mouthfeel, a little bit of a difference here. Uh, the mouthfeel on the Hockerpschor was ridiculously silky smooth and really, really creamy. It was absolutely lush and lovely. Uh, I gave that a 10. Uh, the Francis Connor still had a nice mouthfeel. Um, but it didn't have quite that same intensity of that really silky, creamy quality. Still well above average and within range. I gave it an eight. Uh, for the finish, both of these beers had very nice pronounced long finishes. That was so nice because you got to really enjoy and continue to let the flavors linger of exactly how they balanced all the classic Hefeweizen uh, flavor and character traits. Uh, they both, I gave just one point shy of perfection. I gave them both a nine. Uh, head and retention, slight disparity here. Uh, the Hockerpschor, you could not have asked for a better head to be formed from a bottle at your house. It put most stouts on draft on Nitro Tap from a bar to shame. I gave it a perfect 10 out of 10. Um, the Francis Connor also developed a really nice head and it uh, formed beautifully and it had wonderful staying power but it wasn't quite to the same level as the Hawker, so I gave it a nine. Um, moving on to the appearance, slight disparity here too. Um, the Hawker Pschor, great looking appearance, certainly well above average. It was just a little darker than the textbook average uh, Hefeweizen, so I gave it a nine. The Francis Connor, this is the poster child for how a Hefeweizen should look. That straw, pale yellow color with just the slightest hint of amber, perfect 10 out of 10. Uh, moving on to the balance. Both exceptionally well-balanced beers. I cannot state that enough. These are two of the best balanced Hefeweizens um, that I know of. And I've, I've had them many, many times. It was really fun to jump in and really dig deep into what makes these beers so special. Um, for the balance on the Hawker, I gave it a nine. I did dock one point because as a Hefeweizen, that clovey quality from the yeast is really... It's the swan song of the style. It just wasn't quite present enough for me to kick it up, but it was still wonderfully balanced. The Francis Connor reminded me yet again why this was the Heffa above all others that I drank regularly. The balance on this was textbook, a wonderfully pronounced clove uh, profile, and still that classic citrusy kind of lemon, citrusy, orange zest, 
and then that wonderful malt, malt bill back. It, it was just wonderful. Perfect 10 out of 10 for the balance on the Francis Connor. A uh, feeling any intangible? Only a one point difference again. I gave the Hawker a nine. I gave the Francis Connor a perfect 10. And the reason behind that is the same reason I just stated. This had what I want in a Hefebweizen in terms of that clove quality intensity. This just wasn't quite there. Um, finally, as an example of the style, it mirrors exactly what my feeling and intangible category did. A nine for the Hawker and a 10 for the Francis Connor. Um, both excellent top tier Hefebweizens. You cannot go wrong with either beer. Um, just, it's, it's really a question of what you want in a beer. For this style, this just needed a little more clove forward and this had it. This, this, is, this is the gold standard for me of Hefeweizen's. If I ever come across a Hefeweizen out of Germany that I think does it better than Francis Connor, it's uh, gonna be an eye-opening uh, treat for me because um, I've yet to find it. Um, nonetheless, that brings the total scores for their example of style to nine and 10, and the total scores on both beers for this head-to-head -head German Hepa fights in battle to the exact same. They both get a 92. Ridiculously high scores, and these are two of the absolute Hepa Weizens, absolute best Hepa Weizens I could think of to suggest, and for good reason. Slightly different scores in different categories, but it really just comes down to personal preference. Do you want a little more creamy beer that maybe is a little bit darker in appearance, which really doesn't affect anything other than just judging a base for the style, and uh, maybe a little bit longer finish, but not quite as clovey? Or do you want the hallmark of the style, that clovey quality from the Hepavitsen yeast that lasts really long, is a lot more present, but still in equal balance, not quite as creamy though, it doesn't last quite as long. It's really just a question of what you're looking for in a Hefeweizen. Um, these are both excellent, and I would go for them both uh, in, in different moods, really. If, if I was thinking, oh boy, I'd love a Hefe, but boy, I was thinking of something creamy like a cream ale or a nice nitro tap stout, I would probably go for the Hocker because it's just so creamy and you still get all the Hefe characteristics. If I just wanted as bold and big of a Hefe character I could get, I would go with the Francis Connor. You can't pick a bad one out of these two folks. Perfect tie, 92, and they both well earned it. Absolutely fantastic beers. I recommend them above all other Hefeweizens I could think of. And that wraps up today's Hefeweizen Head-to-Head -head Battle Part 2. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, I really appreciate you tuning in today. Um, thank you so much. As uh, you know the drill by now, please like comment, subscribe if you haven't already done so, but comments are really big. I do want to interact with you. Let me know what you think, tell me your thoughts. What would you like to see? What do you want me to review? Uh, do you have any questions, anything I can help you with? Please let me know, I am here for you. Um, if you wanna keep in the loop when our videos go live, if you have a bad memory, you can click the notification bell. It will let you know right when they go to live to YouTube so you won't miss any of our reviews and other exciting content we have coming up. Thanks again. Till next time, folks, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Prost.